You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know, you know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my innermost being, inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts. God, how vast the sum of them. Where I too, where I too count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked, away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count, I count them my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Don't run off just yet. Keep your microphone on. Guess what? Do you want me to reread it? Guess what? What? You did it. I, was, I had in my notes she wasn't going to say what. She was supposed to be just blank and I was going to say it's like knock huh? knock. Did I say what? You did. That's, That's good. So, rude. so guess what? <laughs> guess what? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Today's sermon is not for you. It's not for you at all. And I haven't, I haven't practiced this with my wife because I was afraid she'd tell me not to preach it. So I, it's I a bit of a secret. I did ask if you yeah. wanted to practice. So not, and I didn't said, say it's no, not for no, you. It's all good. It's not for you. And why am I preaching a sermon that's not for you? For me? Yeah. Or for any of you? Or for any of you? Uh, I'm not sure. Well. For God? I'm glad you asked, although I kind of asked for you. Why? Why are you preaching a sermon that's not for me or for us? Well, it's none of your business. Okay. So rude to me. <laughs> I'm joking not about the sermon, of course. This sermon is for me. This, I'm preaching this for me, um, but I'm joking, for of you? course. Because I'm about to make it so your business. So not for us, but no, for you. I'm, I'm preaching to myself to, oh. this morning. Okay. Yeah. Okay, see, I, choose, I chose to preach Psalm 139 because I needed to hear it. I needed to hear it. That's, that's what this is about today. I needed to hear it because the last couple of months have been pretty difficult. And I, 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 I suspect I'm not the only one who feels that way. And it's not getting easier, is it? I, I, I don't think it's getting easier. It's certainly not getting easier for me. It's getting harder. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to dump my struggles on you. I may come to tears because Psalm 139 is powerful. You read through this psalm, it's very hard not to have it impact you. Um, but I'm not going to dump my problems on you. <laughs> don't worry. Well, last week I realized when this psalm came up in the message that, that I needed to hear it. Because to be honest, I've been feeling like a bit of a fifth wheel lately. 
And I'm not talking about one of those fifth wheel caravans. Has anyone got one of those? Oh, that's a shame. They're amazing. They're huge. If someone here had one, I'd be wanting to borrow it. They're just so cool. I'm not talking about those, right? I'm talking about a fifth wheel on a car. A fifth wheel on a car is completely useless. It can't change the car's direction. It hasn't got the traction to speed it up or slow it down. It is just hopeless. And if that image isn't helping you, I felt a bit like one of those appliances that I know you've all bought. You went to the shops hungry. Never do that. You saw an appliance with a picture on the box that looked just so amazing. So you bought it. It was 20 bucks for this waffle maker or jaffle maker or whatever it is. And you took it home. And guess where it is now in the garage after being used once? Or it could be like the chocolate fondant that we have that we've actually never opened. It was a present. What do you do? It, it, we all have those things. I feel a bit like that, right? And it's not just, I'm not talking about a fifth wheel in ministry so much or in the church, though that is part of it. I'm a big parent too. I'm feeling like a bit of a fifth wheel lately. My kids are growing up, they're needing us less and less, and more so since lockdown, right? Uh, they seem to have just grown in leaps and bounds, and they don't want to be around us so much. They want to be out there with their friends. For them, lockdown's over. It's, it's, it's party time, isn't it? They're out there getting into it. So it's not just the church, not just ministry, and not just my family. It's been a citizen too. And I feel like a fifth wheel. I've been responsible for my own hygiene since I was a kid, and I think I do a pretty good job of it. Yeah, I don't normally smell. I mean, my wife's still sitting next to me. She, she would tell the truth. You know she would. And I don't know, I normally handle it, but I'm, I, I'm not even re- kind of responsible to wash my hands with hand sanitizer as I enter a building. Someone's got to kind of stop you and squirt it in your hand. Yeah. So even as a citizen, I feel like a fifth wheel. And... Everything just seems to be really hard. The simplest of things. It's just difficult. It's, nothing appears to be having any effect. It's kind of like treading water with, with, without any land in sight. It's hard. It's worrying. It's difficult. It's scary even. Well, surely I'm not alone in this, and I don't think I am, because I'm pretty sure God put this message on my heart because I'm not alone in this. Don't worry about me, I'm fine. (laughs) Pray for me, certainly. Well, Psalm 139, wow. I mean, this psalm was written 3,000 years ago. I mean, just think about that for the moment. Who's got an iPhone that's more than five years old? Who's got anything that's more than 20 years old? A few of us would. 3,000 years ago, written by David, now King David. You remember David and Goliath, that Sunday school story? The guy who carried a severed head around in his backpack for a few weeks? They leave that bit out in Sunday school, but it's, it's true. It's in the Bible. Yeah. Every step, every meal, everything hard, definitely difficult, unfair, and even a bit scary. And out of this place that King David is in comes the most beautiful of the Psalms. A Psalm that brings me to tears time and time again. Well, I'm going to pray and then we're just going to run through this quickly and I'm not going to talk about it from David's perspective. I'm going to speak about it from my own situation. Lord, thank you for such beautiful words that we can meditate on, that can encourage us and grow us. Open our hearts, open our minds to your word. Amen. Amen. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, O Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Can you see what I mean? Can you see the beauty? Now just pause for a moment and let those words sink in. 
They're not supposed to be like water on a duck's back. They're meant to change our hearts. In the midst of everything, thinking thoughts that I shouldn't think, feeling things that a child of God shouldn't feel, at least I think I shouldn't feel, in all of this, God knows me. He doesn't only know me, but he has searched me. Every thought known, every word before it's on my lips known. Every situation, every circumstance, every bit of suffering, past, present, future, all of it known. It's just too much to comprehend, isn't it? It's too wonderful to bear. It is scary even. I mean, I can escape my own thoughts and feelings with a good night's sleep, yet that's getting harder and harder to maintain. I can escape with a couple of beers and a bit of Netflix, trip to the shops, buying stuff I don't need. I can escape with food and the news can escape by entering into other people's sufferings and injustices all over the world. But that love, that love, the love, the attentiveness of our great God, how can I escape that? Not to mention this love. It's an attention to detail that I do not deserve. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. Yes, Lord, yes. It doesn't matter where I'm at. It doesn't matter what I feel. It doesn't matter what I think. I can never escape your comfort your assurance, your leading, and your love. Yet it's so hard. How, Lord, can all of this, everything I'm thinking, everything I feel, everything I suffer, and all that I see, how can it all be part of your plan? Surely the darkness will hide me and the light will become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day. For darkness is like light to you. Who am I kidding? You know everything, God. You are everywhere. Everything will be for your glory and for your good purposes. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. I know, God, you do not make mistakes. I see the beauty of your creation. It's all around me. I, from the spider's web to the coral sea, from the, from the ant to the whale, from the grass to the trees. All of it wonderful, all of it beautiful. And yes, Lord, even me, wonderful, intentional, never hidden, never secret, and never, ever alone. For my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in that secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the sea, yeah, if your eyes saw my unformed body, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Every detail from my wonky little toe to my crooked nose and my big ears <laughs> to my feelings and my thoughts and my doubts and my worries, all of it intentional, all of it purposeful. And who am I to say what you created, God, isn't beautiful? How can I possibly be concerned, be anxious? How can I worry when you, God, you are in all of this? You see it all. You know 
it all. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. And when I awake, I am still with you. Yes, Lord, my thoughts, my feelings, the trials, the struggles, it just comes like the tide and it goes like the tide. But you, Lord, you never leave me. You're always with me. You are the only constant that I know and can trust. So God, I give up. I give up. And I give it to you. I give it to you. I give you my worth. I give you my value. I don't know me, but you know me. And I am who you say I am. I give to you my desire to control, to want to make this world the way I want it to be. For this is your world. I am but a traveller here passing through. It isn't right that I try to form it in my image when it already beautifully reflects your image. Most of all, God, I want to give you my heart because I do not know anyone, not even myself, who knows how to look after a heart like you do. Yes, God, I am yours and you are mine. But God, let me just share my heart with you for just a moment. See, God, there's people out there who just don't get it. They seem to be riding this treadmill of life to nowhere. They make it hard for me to speak your words and to tell your truths. They make it hard for me to praise you and worship you in everything I do. If only, if only you, O God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies, but you, Lord, you created them too. And you know them as well as you know me. Lord, I'm sorry. Help me to understand your ways, your love for all people, all those who are far and near. And please, Lord, search me and know my heart. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. I can see that I am a work in progress. I can see that I need to be tested, refined like a a refiner test metal. Burn away the impurity, the lack and the doubt. I can see that I need you, God. I can see that you will lead me to that eternal life the glorious life that is to come, that King Jesus, your son, is preparing for me right now. And I know, Lord, I know this with all my heart and with all my soul. Let me pray. Loving God, thank you for your great love and for the good purpose you have for each and every single person who follows you. Please give us hearts to know you. Help us to follow your ways and be your people. In the name of King.